In this video, we determine the rate law for a reaction with uh, two reagents using the isolation method. Okay, so in the prior two videos, we have looked at how to determine the rate law for a reaction using um, uh, either the integration or the half-life or the differential van Hoff method, but the reactions only had one reagent. Very commonly, uh, reactions are going to have uh, two reagents at least. So uh, when we write the rate law, then uh, we have to write something like this. K okay, is going to be equal to uh, the following. Okay, so that will be your generic rate law. And again, the idea here will be to determine now what the rate constant is, and then to determine the orders with respect to all of the reagents. Okay, so the question is, well, how, how do we do this? We're going to introduce in this video uh, a very simple method that is called the isolation method. And as the name indicates, uh, it just consists on trying to isolate uh, uh, the dependence of the rate on the concentration of just one of the reagents uh, in, in isolation, separation, and then uh, uh, try to determine what the reaction order is with respect to the other reagent, and then put it all together. All right, so uh, the type of experiments that you, that you can do for this uh, type of isolation uh, process would be as follows. Uh, uh, you would do a series of experiments in which you have uh, you measure the rate for various concentrations of A and B. Right? So uh, that would be the rate, and uh, as, as usual, this could be initial rates that are easier to work with. Okay, so let's assume that the concentration here of A is in millimolar, uh, the concentration of B is in millimolar, and the rate is in millimolar per second. Okay? Right, so you would do a first set of experiments in which uh, you, just, you would call this experiment one, and then you would, use, you would just use whatever concentrations you wish. Okay, so for A, we can make this one millimolar. For B, we can make this one millimolar. And then we would measure the rate. Okay, so suppose that we measure the initial rate for these uh, concentrations, and that happens to be one uh, millimolar per second. Right, so this is going to be a reference experiment. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to explore the dependence of uh, the rate on the concentra concentration of just one of the reagents in isolation so that we can determine the uh, reaction rate order with respect to each one of them. So in a second set of experiments, then what we could do here would be to say, well, I'm going to study the reaction order with respect to B, and that means that I'm going to hold fix the concentration of A so that any variation in the rate is only due to the change uh, uh, in the concentration of B. Right? So then what you would do is repeat the experiment with the same concentration of A, and then uh, uh, change the concentration of B. Again, what you're doing is you're essentially holding fix this term right here, okay, and only examining how the rate depends uh, on the concentration of B, and that will allow you to determine what the reaction order with respect to B is. All right, so suppose that you can do that, and then you uh, determine that uh, the reaction rate is equal to uh, 2 millimolar per second. Now, uh, what you would need to uh, finish with is another experiment in which you isolate the dependence of the rate on the concentration of A by holding fix the concentration of B. Okay, so the third set of experiments would be uh, uh, now you hold fix the concentration of B and then vary the concentration of A and then measure the rate. Okay, again, notice that if you compare this experiment with that experiment, then the only thing that you're changing is the concentration of A so the change in the rate only comes from the dependence of the rate on the concentration of A, which is just that uh, reaction order X. All right, so the question is, well, how do we come with the exact numbers of uh, X and Y? And uh, finally, the rate constant um, for this type of experiments. Well, uh, comparing experiment one and two, what we can actually do is to try to write uh, the rate loss for each one of them. Okay, so the rate loss for the first experiment will be uh, V0, the rate, for the first experiment is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A to the power of X times the concentration of B in the second experiment, in the first experiment, to the power of um, Y. Okay? And then uh, we could write here uh, the rate for the second experiment is going to be equal to the rate constant that doesn't change. Uh, concentration of A in the second experiment, concentration of B in the second experiment to the power of y. Okay, notice that uh, when we compare experiment one and experiment two, the concentrations of A does haven't changed, right? So um, uh, that is actually going to be constant. That doesn't change. Either this changes and that changes. 
Okay, so to actually uh, solve for uh, y, what we can do then is uh, uh, divide this expression, the uh, rate law in the second experiment over the rate law in the first experiment, and that would be something like this. Okay, again, notice that now what you will have is this um, k times the concentration of A in the second experiment to the x over k times the concentration of A in the first experiment to the x, and then the concentration of B in the second experiment to the y, concentration of B in the second experiment, uh, in, the f in the first experiment to the y. Okay, but again, we say that this number is the same, and when you compare experiment one and experiment two, the concentrations of A are also the same, right? so that means that this cancels as well. All right? So we come up with uh, a way to be able to determine what Y is. The, exper uh, the rate, the initial rate in the second experiment is 2.0 millimolar per second. The rate in the first experiment is 1.0 millimolar per second. And this is going to be equal to the concentration of B in the second experiment, which we know is 2 molar. <laughs> millimolar to the y over the concentration of B in the first experiment, which is one millimolar to the power of y. All right, so all of the units cancel. That unit cancels with that unit. Uh, that unit cancels with that unit. And then we find that uh, in the left-hand side, we will have that two is equal to 2.0 to the power of y. Okay, that's what happens when you uh, evaluate and that means that y has to be equal to 1. Okay? Uh, so that's a, a straightforward way to determine what uh, the reaction order is with respect to y. Okay, so we have done that uh, by comparing experiment 1 with experiment 2. Now we could do the same thing, comparing experiment 1 to experiment 3 to determine the reaction order with respect to A, which would be x. Okay, so uh, let's continue to do that. Much as what we've done before, what we would do now is divide the rate uh, law of the third experiment over the rate law of the first experiment. All right, so we would say that V0 for the third experiment over V0 in the first experiment, that is going to be equal to K, A concentration of A in the third experiment to the X, K concentration of A in the first experiment uh, to the X, times concentration of B in the third experiment to the Y, which we already know it's 1, so we can actually write it as this, and the concentration of B in the first experiment to the Y, which is 1. You can notice that in experiment 1 and 3, the concentrations of B are the same, so these numbers cancel out because they are both 1 millimolar. Okay, the rate constants also cancel out, and then we have that the uh, ratio of the rates from uh, the third experiment to the first experiment should be equal to the ratio of the concentrations of A to the uh, reaction order x. Okay, so notice that 2.0, which is the ratio of uh, the rate law, sorry, 4.0, which is uh, the ratio of the rates from experiment 3 to experiment 1, uh, has to be equal to uh, the concentration of A in the third experiment, which is 2.0 uh, millimolar, over the concentration of A in the first experiment, which is 1.0 millimolar to the power of x. Okay? Uh, those units cancel, and then we will have we have that uh, this is equal to 2.0. All right, so clearly what this means is that uh, the reaction order with respect to x, with respect to a, will be x is equal to 2. Okay, so uh, we have already determined what the reaction orders are respect, uh, with respect to a and b. The last thing that we would need to do here is to determine what the rate constant is. Okay, so we already know that this is equal to uh, 2. And that is equal to 1. Second order with respect to A, first order with respect to B, third order overall. Right. So the last point here would be to try to determine what um, the rate constant, constant is. And to determine what the rate constant would be, uh, you can just replace uh, everything in any one of the experiments. Right. So you can take experiment 1 and then plug the rate right here, then plug the concentration of A right here, squared it, plug the concentration of B right there, and then your only unknown would be the rate constant which you would be able to uh, find out, solve for it, and find it out. You can also determine what the units are for that rate constant, because notice that this is an overall third order reaction, so that automatically means that this is going to be equal to molar to the minus 2 per second. Okay?
Uh, so this is the isolation method, uh, or, or an easy uh, view of the isolation method. Uh, and this method allows you to calculate, again, independently what the reaction orders are for the two reagents, uh, and then be able to also determine the rate constant. However, uh, this method has uh, difficulties, and that is that if there's any error at all in determining these rates, uh, uh, then you actually might be off in determining what uh, the reaction order is and what the rate constant is. It would be much simp uh, or much more accurate to actually be able to use the uh, Van Hoff or differential method uh, uh, so that you can actually reduce the error. Okay, so in the Van Hoff of the differential method, we're, gonna, we're going to use this, this uh, idea of the isolation method, but instead of measure, making just one uh, experiment in which we just change the concentration of one of the reagents in turn, we're going to make various experiments in which we hold fix the concentration of one of the reagents and then examine the uh, dependence on the other reagent, okay, so that uh, our, our measurements are much more accurate and our determination of the reaction order is much more accurate, okay, so that is going to be in the next video.